an eargasm of learning, and a no-fuss show. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast, where you can learn straightforward topics about branding, digital entrepreneurship, online business, and many more with your charming host, John Santos, along with inspiring entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders worldwide. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast with me, John Santos, and we have a special special guest. I am amazed. This person is, first of all, she's very beautiful. Second is, she's very talented. She's very humble. This person is so, so big in, in my perspective. You know, this is debatable, but in my perspective, she's just in a position to reach out, help people. And she is doing it. And, and that's the reason why she's so big, but she has this kind and humble heart. I my respect for this person is you know solid. It's, yeah. She's just an amazing, blessed human being. She's a business coach, a mentor, a teacher, an entrepreneur. She helps people scale their business to freedom, wealth, and sustainability. Let's all welcome today's guest, Samantha Hearn. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. You. you're too kind thank you for having me thank you for inviting me thank you for that amazing introduction yeah thank you for having me I, I love it I love it and that's true I mean I'm a fan not because you know um of your status but I believe I always say this and you know Pete we're common friends of Pete but I always say this that intent comes before content and that is the most important thing for me your intention and that's the reason why I really love you and, and I really am believing in what you're doing is because I can see the intent, that authenticity in you to really help out transforming people. I was, I was uh, watching testimonial videos in your website and it's such an amazing thing to see different people, you know, they're, they're genuine. They're, they're not promoting you, but they're, they're sharing their transformation and, and that's something when people when you can transform people, you can see the the real authentic, you know, that drive, that core. And I can see that in you. And I am blessed again to be in your presence for you to be in the show. So thank uh, you so much again. Uh, thank you for having me. Honestly, it's my pleasure. Right. So I'm going to call you Sam because, you know, a lot of people call you Sam. Is that OK? Go. Here's a, yeah, here's a trivia. Sam. Here's a trivia, Samantha. Here's a trivia. Um, my branding um, name, which is actually my first name, is Jan, right? And, and you know that. We we're all in, in the industry and, and everybody calls me Jan. Um, but in the Philippines, they call me Sam. Yes, yes. That's um, my second name is Samuel. So sh short for uh, Sam. So it it's a nickname of Samuel. So, you know, Sam meets Sam. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Samantha, let's start off with our traditional question here in the show. We all know you are successful and where you are at the moment. But the question is, who influenced you or what influenced you to be in this position of greatness? The floor is yours. Tell us your story. Um, I have two answers to that. I think what's really important is the, the biggest influence for me is, is definitely just my life. I think you, I think we all find different paths for different reasons you know we work with people that experience redundancy divorce separation grief abandonment anxiety mental health you know there's so many things that lead people into different paths and I definitely think that the biggest thing that's inspired me is my own path um and experiencing a lot of challenges as I was growing up my dad died when I was 14 unexpectedly my mum moved to Jamaica when I was 21. So I was kind of thrust into this life of independence, 
I knew what it was. I'd experienced, you know, real heartbreak. I had my own struggles with mental health. So I think the biggest thing that drives me is that, you know, that we're just all people trying to create our very best experience. But for some, the drive to want to create our best just ha hasn't hit yet. It hasn't landed. And it could be because we haven't really felt that life has been, has challenged us. And, and, and we end up, and I've, I've read so many books on this, but we end up almost in a state of comfort, a state of autopilot, a state of being on a hamster wheel, a state of settling. So I think the biggest thing that drives me forward is I never really had a chance to settle because all of these things kept happening, you know, in, at a young age. So that's kind of in my blood, not to settle for anything less. But the other thing that definitely drives me forward is, is my dad. You know, he, we lived with my dad. We didn't live with our mum. So his tenacity, his, his, his kind of work, the way he brought us up. Um, I do a lot of what I do based based on that, based on knowing, you know, sometimes, sometimes life creates opportunities for us, but we see them disguised in challenges. But actually, the majority of the time, it's not a challenge, it's just a chance for us to grow. So yeah, my, my two biggest I would say drivers, definitely my own experience. That's a huge driver for me. But also, yeah, my, my dad, they would be my two biggest pulls. But for anyone listening, I think that's a really good question. Do you see your life as a challenge or as an opportunity? Because only then can we start to really make changes when we see things as an opportunity. And when we and I'm not saying things aren't tough. Of course they are. But I think actually, especially when you go into entrepreneurship or you do things that other people wouldn't do and that other people are thinking, this is so weird. Like, why would you do that? It, it's all because we see the opportunities. So, yeah, that they would be my two drivers. I love that. I love that. You, you mentioned the key word there, entrepreneurship. Okay, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, but first, um, a bit story, a background story. How did you end up in the entrepreneurial journey? You mentioned that it's not easy, and I agree. You know, not everyone is... Okay, let me put this straight. Everyone can do it, but not everyone is brave enough to start that journey, right? And clearly, you took that path. What happened? How, what changed you to go that journey? So I did, I, I went to university and graduated with a first class honors degree in education. So I did a four year teaching degree. So um, yeah, thank you. So yeah, so I, I then went into teaching. So I was a secondary school teacher. I did that for a decade and I was ahead of year. So I was in charge of, of 200 students, academic um, behavior, attendance, pastoral care, everything. And I did year seven, which is age 13, uh, age 11 to 12, all the way up to sixth form. So I was head of year 13, there's 17 and 18. So my whole life, my vocation, and it's in my blood, was to teach. I absolutely loved being a teacher. And I'm so proud that that is my profession. I still see that as my profession. And um, I worked in a really prestigious school in the UK. Grades were really high. The students worked so, so hard. It was a state school, so it wasn't private. So that made it even harder. You know, you didn't, you couldn't choose or select the students, but they just, it was such an amazing school. But I got to a point where I went into teaching straight from university and I didn't have a gap year. So I went into teaching at 22 and I obviously then did really well and ended up with roles of responsibility. And I got to a point where I just thought, I don't know if I can continue at this intensity until I retire. You know, I was working six till six really really high profile school uh, and it was I just thought I, I wonder if there's I, I, I just I always knew that I was I was meant for more I always knew that I was meant to make a greater impact um, and I 
I didn't necessarily want my life to always be on a schedule. I was waiting. You waited for certain exams. You counted down to certain tests. Everything was on a, a schedule. You know, your whole life as a teacher is driven by the system. And I, I just thought, I don't know if, if I could do this until, until I'm 65. Um, not because I didn't love it, but it was just so restrictive. So I... At the time, my first business was in anxiety coaching and mental health. So I wrote a book. I did a lot of public speaking. So I just started an Instagram account. And I just thought, let's just see where this goes. And I had no idea that it would lead me here. But I think that's the point. When you go into anything, if you're focused on an end result, it makes the journey so much less desirable because you're just focused on, well, I haven't got here yet. But for me, I started an Instagram account. I started just creating content, showing up. I, I didn't have this plan that I have now. Like I wasn't a business coach. I wasn't coaching people on starting businesses. That wasn't, that wasn't part of the, the plan. But when you allow yourself to, to put yourself into a situation of change, you can create growth. And ultimately, I think that's what entrepreneurship is. Entrepreneurship is not about saying I'm just going in this one direction and I'm going to make this one thing happen and I'm going to achieve this one goal. Entrepreneurship is so flexible. There's so many bends and twists and turns and, you, and also pitfalls. There's so many things that go wrong. But I think that that's the biggest thing, you know. So for me, I kind of, I almost fell into it, if I'm honest. I, you know, I, I, I started the account, I worked really hard, you know, I worked evenings and weekends, I would say yes to everything, I put myself out there, but where I am now isn't where I thought I would be, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I ended up do, doing what I do now. I, I, I totally understand, I was in the same um, situation before, and I, I failed um, three, three businesses already, and, and I love what you said that you know, failure is a part of it. Uh, there's pitfalls. It's learning from those situations that will really keep you going, right? And I love that. I love your perspective. Now, you mentioned you mentioned that you are in the stage of entrepreneurship and clearly, fast forward, you are successful. And, and I know you are, you're aiming for a lot more. You're aiming to help a lot more people, transforming lives, you know, supporting people. But it's very evident that you already have principles, you have foundations that are solid. That's why you can help more people, help more businesses. I'm excited. And I know our viewers, our listeners are excited to know those values. So, Sam, mm. are you ready for this? Business growth yes. tips. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want to... There's a lot of experts out there that talk about, hey you will be successful because of this or because of that or because of this secret thing. It's not wrong, but I rather have an expert like you speaking, you know, authenticity. It's natural. It's not going to be successful immediately. It's, it's not like that. Business is not like that. Entrepreneurship is not like that. I love what you said that if you focus on the end goal, it will really stress you out because you're aiming, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're looking to get that. And there's, a, there's stages. It will frustrate you in one point or another. So I rather focus on, okay, how can I grow like a plant? You know, a seed is, is planted it, in time, step by step, it grows, it gets bigger, it gets healthier. And in time, it will produce fruit, right? So from an expert like you, Sam, mm -hmm. please do share your perspective, your learning, your experience, your opinion in business growth, your tips. Please, the floor is yours. Sure. Okay. I'm going to give you maybe three, maybe five. We'll see how succinct they are. So the number one is... You're the, st you're the star, media. Sam. You're the star. You can give like 20 or 100. <laughs> So the first one is social media is an illusion. Everyone needs to remember that. Like if you're, if you're 
looking at what someone's doing on social media for one minute, so one minute of stories, and you are you will not be seeing the time they're spending on their laptop late at night, the time where things are going wrong, looking at getting contracts, like hiring their first VA, you know, spelling mistakes. You're not seeing their ideas, their frustrations. So social media, if you are comparing your business growth and you're comparing your success to what anyone else is doing on the internet, you are setting yourself up for a lifetime of pain because you are not that. here. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, are, you are not here to be like anyone else and you are not here to be creating a life that only looks good on camera. So something that I stand for, anyone that follows me, Monday to Friday, I'm in my gym gear. I don't have makeup on. My hair's in a greasy ponytail, but that's part of who I am. I show up as myself. I like to exercise. I like to be comfortable. I like to feel free. I like to feel like I can be myself and express who I am. So if I, but if I was to look at what everyone else is doing on, online when I first started and you see so many people that are successful and everything seems really polished, you know, everything seems they need to be on their best form all the time, that would have really held me back. So that the first thing I want to say is that social media is not the only truth. And if you are finding yourself believing that things happen instantly you know oh that's happened on social media that's happened on social media that's happened on social media but do you know what's happened before then did you do you know how long they have been doing whatever it is they were doing so that's the first thing the second thing i would say is if you were training for a marathon you would not be going out and running 26 miles today that wouldn't happen your body would not be able to do it your body would physically not be able to, to do that. And you know, of course you could push yourself and you could push yourself, but you haven't got the endurance yet. You have to train. You need to walk, you need to do jogs, you need to go for 3K, 10K, how, you, know, you need to lead up to it. It's exactly the same in business. But why, when we think about growing our business, do we think I need to get to a six figure business or I need to get to 10K months? Well, first, let's just focus on one sale. Let's just focus on sending one invoice. Let's just focus on getting yourself to a point where someone is paying to work with you. This is all part of the marathon. So the second thing I would say is do not feel that you have to be further ahead than you are, quicker than you are. This is not a race. This is not a race. And your business is supposed to be your legacy. It's not a quick fix. It's not, it's not just this quick instant, oh, you know, I need to get here by tomorrow. You have to live with this business, no one else. And I started five years ago. And when I look now at a lot of people that I started with, they aren't, they aren't there anymore. And it is sad and it, it really is sad. But the reason for that is, they were building their business for the wrong people, for the wrong reasons. And it wasn't being built on long-term growth. So your business is here to change your life, not just this month or this quarter or for this one social media post. So that's the third, the third thing. The fourth thing I would say is you don't need a lot of money to make an impact. So if you're thinking that your business growth has to be to become a millionaire, we are doing this wrong. If you are smart with your money, if you understand the business that you have, you understand your money, you can donate to charities, help people retire in your family, buy your home, be debt free. You can have cash in the bank and you do not need to be a millionaire. So remember that when you're looking at your numbers, be really clever from the start because the more money that you earn doesn't mean that is the more money you take home as the entrepreneur. This doesn't work that way. So I think that's another thing. There's a myth 
that if someone says they had 100k sales month they're just rolling around in money that's not how this works you know you have to pay your taxes you have to pay your salary your team you know you have there's so much that goes into it so you don't need to be a millionaire to be able to make an impact and i'm firmly stand by that you know it's all about what you want to do with your money for example in 2018 no 2019 one of the charities that i used to i used to work in a catholic school um so it it was part of the uh, guidelines you had to donate a certain amount of money and raise a certain amount for charity obviously because catholicism a really big that is giving back so we during lent every year one of our charities was um it was founded in scotland and it's called mary's meals it's a global charity now and it supports children in third world countries to be able to have a hot meal every day and go to school um, when i became an entrepreneur i that was one of my goals that i wanted to sponsor my own school education is really important to me you know i i, I it re, it's, in, it's in my bones i love it so i found out that for me to be able to sponsor a school for 362 children for an entire year and all of their staff would be a donation of five and a half thousand pounds for the year. I don't need to be a millionaire for that. I didn't need to be a millionaire for that. So I was able to donate to sponsor this school and I've renewed my sponsorship. And it's not because I have lots of money in a way that it's just sitting in my house floating around. It's because what I choose to do with my money is make it last and create an impact. And if you're looking at business growth, that's what this is about. Business growth. This isn't about um, a sprint to any kind of finish line. So that would be the fourth thing. And the fifth thing I would say is it's OK to change your mind. It's OK to change your mind. So if you're in a business right now that you love, but you want to do something else or you've up leveled or you've grown, that is okay. Your business, you create the rules. There is no rule book. It's your business. If you want to work with 10 people and in three months, you're like, I only want to work with three. If you want to take a month off for a holiday, if you want to bring out a podcast, if you decide you don't like the podcast anymore and you want to do YouTube, if you decide you don't like YouTube, give yourself the freedom to express yourself and make decisions that suit your creativity. Because this is the whole point, business growth. Your business will not grow if you keep yourself, one, away from making mistakes, which I say in apostrophes, and two, away from changing your mind and going in a different direction. Because this is about what you want for your life. It's about what you want for your business. And as you grow and expand, things will change. Your prices will change. Your programs will change. Your services will change. That is all okay. Embrace it. Embrace the change. So they would be my five big top tips around business growth. Ooh, wow. Sam, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's like knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. I, you got me at the first one. <laughs> that first one was like, boom, <laughs> headshot. Done deal. I'm sold. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I totally agree. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it sounds like it's simple, but it's really a game changer. You know, and, and I believe in this generation, you know, uh, a new industry, you know, uh, on, it, it's, it's the business is in a whole new different level in, in this generation and what it is to come. Those tips, man powerful it starts with the mind you know changing renewing your mind how you feel and then connected to your heart to your identity you know living your life don't don't be inside the box be your authentic self love that i love that thank you so much sam <clears throat> that is you know i i'm gonna be biased but it's one of the best <laughs> best you know, perspective that I got from a guest. So thank you, Sam. I, I'm sure our listeners oh and our viewers are, I, I hope they, they listed it down because it will really got help them in their journey towards, you know, entrepreneurial and, and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sam. Now, yes. we are not done yet, Sam. We are not done. We started with your story 
And then we followed up with knowledge bombs. <laughs> now we are going to play a game. Okay. All right. So this is a traditional part in the show we call the creative fast talk. We will ask okay. you questions that you are not allowed to spend time in thinking what the right answer would be. First word that okay. comes in mind, shoot. Okay. All right. Let's play the creative fast talk. First question. Sun or snow? Sun. Love or money? Love. Structure or chaotic? Structure. Mm. If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? A dolphin because they're fun, playful, they're sociable, and everyone loves them. Oh yeah, including me. <laughs> What's your favorite color, Sam? Um, yellow, do you need to ask me that? <laughs> That's the reason why I asked. We're, we're sharing the same branding color. <laughs> Long live yellow. Next, passenger or driver? <laughs> driver. Mountains or the beaches? Mountains. Movies or books? Movies. All right. Since you answered that, there's a, uh, a different set of questions, okay? What are the top three movies for you of all time? Ooh. Okay. Dirty Dancing. Mm. I mean, classic. Yeah, yeah. This one is very wild. But it's so good. If I'm ever in a bad mood or I feel low, I watch this. It's called Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging. I don't know that. I'll check it out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, no okay. one does. It's like a teen rom-com, but I love it. And the third movie, I know, I love it. The third movie, I would say, there's so many, like, oh, Strictly Ballroom. Mm, okay, okay. So that's three of all time for you. Now, another set of questions under that category. Mm -hmm. YouTube or Netflix... Oh, YouTube and Netflix or the old school cinemas? YouTube and Netflix. Okay, okay, okay. Next, soap, bath soap or toothbrush? <laughs> I love a bath, so baths. <laughs> All right, okay. What is your dream superpower and why? I would like to be able to time travel. Ooh, why? No, why? I want to change that. No, I want to change that. I want to change that. I would like to be able to fly. Okay, okay. Why? Why? Because I want to be able to get everywhere that I want to go as quickly as possible, but also I want it to be fun. So <laughs> I want to fly. All right. What was something inside your bag when you were a kid? What is always inside your bag when you were a kid? A Tamagotchi. Oh, I love that. I'm a fan of that. Do you remember what, 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 what creature was it when you were, what animal was it? I had, it was a turtle. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I, I remember I had a chick, you know, a, a baby Oh my god, yeah, I had yeah, a chick. Yeah, and 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 it died. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I had a chick. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And then the Tamagotchi is color yellow. Like uh shape of an egg. Thing. An egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? We're 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 alike. <laughs> All right. Remember um, that. Yeah. It, it was a classic. It was a it was a very popular thing in, in the Philippines uh, at that time when they launched that. So good and then you know it's very expensive i got my, my parents got me one and then one day it died <laughs> so what <laughs> all right next what was the weirdest food you ever tried the weirdest food i've eaten fermented shark in iceland what what <laughs> Can you tell us a, a story of that? Yes. that that's, that's one of the, you know, the most weird answer, weirdest answer I, we got in the show. Really? Fermented shark. Yeah, it's a delicacy there. So um, 
when we went, we we travel a lot. So when we went to Iceland, it's a delicacy. So you had to <laughs> you had to eat this like bit of fermented shark, but it was yeah, it tasted gross. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But wow. Um, I I pity the shark. <laughs> Next, Sam. No. Sam, what are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Um, not getting to the end of my life and feeling proud of what I've achieved. Ooh, that's deep. Okay, okay. That's solid, solid. All right. This last question, Sam, can turn out to be something serious depending on how you will take the question. Okay? If you have the power to bring back someone back from the dead, who would it be? And why? Anyone? Well, do they then live forever or are they back for like a day? Um, at, let's say a, a day. Okay. You can bring back someone back okay. from the dead for a day. 24 hours. Okay. I would bring back my dad. Oof. Oof. For a day mm. because if it was forever I don't think I would because I th although because losing him shaped me as a person however if it was for a day I would definitely bring him back because I know that he would be my brother I've got a twin brother he's got five children I know that he would love that he would love to see his grandkids uh, meet my husband meet my brother's mm. wife you know mm. like that I would love to I'd love that for a day um, so yeah, that would be what I would, that's what I would do. And Samantha, I'll follow it up with another question. Remember before off cam, um, I, I, I said that imagine we're in the coffee shop thing, right? So you bring back your dad back from the dead. We have 24 hours. We're inside the coffee shop and I met him. He's a great guy. And now the question is, what is the first thing that you will tell him? I love him. Oof. Solid. Solid. Sam, I'm sure he is very proud of you and he loves you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Sam, for you know answering those silly questions, sharing that you you ate a fermented shark. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, Samantha, please. Feel free to promote anything, your events, courses, um, social media accounts, promotions. The floor is yours, my dear. I would say follow me on Instagram. If you find me on Instagram, you'll be able to then, you know, see more of what I do, learn about how I could help you, you know, whether it is a course or a podcast or whatever it might be. So, yeah, I would say follow me on Instagram and then, then you can get everything you need there, which is just my name. All right, there you go. There you have it, guys. Please do connect with Samantha. I'm sure I can vouch this. I'm sure she can help you in your journey towards success. Sam, thank you again. I know you're a very busy person. Thank you so much for spending the time yeah. with us here in the show. Thank you for having me. All right. So, guys, this is the Creative Talk with me, Jan Santos, and the very beautiful Samantha Hearn. Have a positive outlook in life. Smile. God bless you. Bye. Thank you for being with us here on the Creative Talk Podcast. I'm your host, John Santos. Don't forget to listen and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you again, always.